will show up. Amen. So he's here today. Why? Not because of who we are, but because of who Jesus is and what he did at Calvary. Amen. And then we have anchored our faith in that work and what he did there did. God is showing up. God is here. Amen. And he says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We have so much, so much to be thankful for today. Amen. And it says, for the Lord, he is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. And that truth is always Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's where you find God's grace. That's where you find his mercy. That's where you find all things that pertains to life and godliness. What a great God we have. Can you give him a good hand clap praise this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I want to go before the Lord in prayer, amen, and, uh, uh, you know, just continue daily uh, to lift up the folks over in the uh, eastern part of the state, over in Asheville, that area, and then uh, also down on the coast and everywhere uh, that those that were out in the path of uh, the hurricane, so much devastation, lives lost, and we just lift up the people. We're praying for a speedy recovery. And, uh, you know, in the midst of this, you know, I can't help but believe that God's trying to wake some folks up in the midst of this, and that's just a that's just an example of the shaking that's going to come upon this world, Amen. And in the midst of all of that devastation, tragedy, and even loss of life, as sad as that is, there's there's a chance that some might be awakened, Amen. And call upon the name of the Lord, and believe upon Jesus and what he did at Calvary and be saved. I mean, I know that's God's will. That's certainly ours. Amen. But let's pray for the people there in the in that area and then also for the people here, those that are preaching the message across the, law, across the land. Amen. We pray God will strengthen them. Amen. And, and, and equip them to continue on in this great race that we're in. Amen. We're not trying to outrun one another, but we want to finish. Amen. That's the great race and we're going to finish, amen, all of those that love his appearing. Praise God. Father, we love you this morning. It is a privilege and honor to gather in your presence, in the presence of God's people. Lord, and even those that's joined us by live streaming this morning, we pray for each one, Lord, and we pray, God, for healing in the sick body this morning to make every bit whole. Hallelujah. We're believing for you to heal spiritually, mentally, and physically this morning. Lord God, just have your way in the lives of the people across the land, Lord. May people be awakened, amen, to that we have a God today that's in charge and control of every single thing. Nothing happens and catches him by surprise. Lord God, we lift up the church today. We pray God that the church would come back to preaching the true gospel, to leave all the nonsense in the land that it has embraced, all of the, uh, the fleshly motives and all of that. We pray, God, that every bit of it will be nailed to the cross and the voices of the pastors and the preachers. Lord, we come back to lifting up the King of kings and the Lord of lords and, and be exalted in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. The glory in that cross, Lord, and not the things that men are attempting to accomplish in this world today. Lord, we lift up once again all of those assemblies this morning that's gathered together preaching the exclusive message of the cross. I know they're a target of the enemy, but God has his hand on them as well. And we pray, God, that you bless, Lord. Pray, God, that you anoint each one, including ourselves, with even a greater anointing of truth, Lord. We pray that you draw people into their assemblies, this one as well. We pray Pray, God, that you expand their listening audience, this one as well, Lord, and let this gospel go out far and wide, hallelujah, with great clarity and understanding, without fear of men or favor toward men. But, God, let it go out in a great, great way in this final hour of the church age. Give us souls. May bondages be broken. 
by your mighty power, may there be fruit bearing in the lives of the saints today. And Father, we love you. We give you all the praise. Lord, anoint our singers and the minister this morning and our singers now as they bring us into the throne of praise, God. And we just help us this morning to take our minds off of the cares of this life and to focus upon you, amen, who is the life giver and gives it abundantly, hallelujah, both now and forever. And we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. You ready to worship the Lord? Give the Lord another good hand clap of praise. Let's praise our great God. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let's praise him this morning. I mean, love to praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. We got everybody that time, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> let's wow. praise him. Let's, let's give a heart to him this morning and give him yes. glory for everything. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus.
Till it's over. over. Thank you, Jesus. You Praise your holy name. We've got a lot to look for when Jesus comes back. It's not over till it's over. In the whole world, everything looks like it's falling apart, but God knows just where we need to be. Amen. You know, He wants us to be in that place to where when someone comes up and they're they're really going some, through some tough times, He wants you to speak up and tell them where the answer is. Nobody, not everybody's going to like what you say, but the fact of the matter is that they need Jesus Christ, and that's the only thing that's going to give them peace in this world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thank God I serve an awesome God. Amen. He's so awesome. There's no, no words that I can say that can lift him up above everything that's going on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Take your burdens to Jesus, your burdens he'll bear. Tell him your sorrows, all your sorrows he'll share. He's waiting just to bless you with his outstretched hands. Just 
Just tell him 
he does he understands praise god amen let's the bible tells us to cast our every everybody say every oh i have to hear that this morning too bible says cast your every care upon him amen where do we do that at well we're just at the, at the foot of the cross amen there where jesus was crucified because there is where god promises to provide us all things that pertains to life and godliness, amen. Let's yoke up with him this morning, amen, and let him carry the weight, hallelujah. Praise God. Let's plow forward today, amen, being yoked up with Jesus. We yoke up with him through the cross, amen. There we are crucified with him, amen. Paul said in Galatians chapter 20 and verse 20, he said, I am crucified with Christ. You can't get any more yoked up, tied up, to anyone at any time than when he was crucified at the cross and we were crucified there with him. Amen. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Out of that crucifixion, life springs up. Life always springs up out of death. Amen. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. It's no longer me. That's what got us in trouble to start with. Amen. But it's Christ that lives in me. And I live now by the faith, not just saved, amen. That's not just how we enter into salvation, but I live by the same redeeming faith that saved me in the beginning. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. On that cross, there's no greater demonstration than one that would lay down his life for us, amen. And that is what Jesus did on the cross, amen. Amen. And there's no other means for salvation apart from the cross. There's no other means for fruit bearing. There's no other means for deliverance. Deliverance from sin and all of the allies from sin. It only comes through the cross. What Jesus did there. Amen. And also our crucifixion with him. And it's done by faith. Amen. And that's what we were singing about earlier. Amen. That good fight of faith. I'm determined to know nothing save Jesus. Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the redeeming faith. That's the place that you can shout victory every day. Amen. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord this morning with our giving. We're going to pass the plate in the living rooms or wherever you are of those that are listening to us this morning, whether on Facebook or by YouTube. We're going to invite you and encourage you to give to the work of the Lord here at Crossway Ministries in the heart of the Mississippi Delta. All you got to do is just go over to our church website crosswayministries.org as soon as it opens up you'll see the donation button you can just tap on it it will open up and it will guide you for your giving through PayPal if you're not able to do that for whatever the reason you can mail your gift to the church mail it to P.O. Box 9097 Greenwood, Mississippi 38930. Amen. And we thank you so very, very much for your giving and partnering with us to get this gospel out to this region and literally around the world to as many as would log on and drink of the water of life freely. Amen. Rest of us, we're going to march down, drop our offering in the offering plate this morning. Let's fellowship a little bit this morning. Amen. And march down and give. Father, we love you. We just simply ask that you multiply this offering many times over to meet the need, bless the giver, bless them abundantly, and I ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus.
Jesus, and everybody said amen and amen. Let's march down and give this morning. Hallelujah. Well, one thing I know for sure, you can't get all of this goodness, this gladness, this happiness and joy, amen, by live streaming. You got to get it in person, amen. Praise the Lord. That's right. And I, I said something a while ago, but I just, I just told Wendy, and I didn't realize what I said. Sometimes, you know, you just have to, the Bible says, be slow to speak and quick to hear. Sometimes you can't do that when you're up here. <laughs> I didn't come out, it didn't come out like I wanted to say it. You know, have you ever done that? Said something. <laughs> so don't be calling, don't be don't be uh, leaving messages, Brother Wayne, saying, that man said this. I know what I said, and, and my, what I meant to say was, there's no one other than God that's above anything. He's the only one above everything, and he's the only one we can go to. There's nothing here that can even remotely compare to him because he's perfect in every way, unlike me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, you know, one day we're going to be we're gonna be in heaven with all the saints, of millions and millions of saints. And I always think about the millions. You know, among those millions will be those babies that's been aborted over the years. You know, so many. Can you imagine a child never been born but, been, but will be grown when they get to heaven? Can you imagine... Multiple, uh, never been here on this earth and had to deal with the pain and the struggles and stuff that we have to go through every day. And it's, it's, her, it's amazing what, uh, it, and I don't say it's amazing in a, in a positive way, why people can say that it's okay to board a baby. It's not okay. God, God made that baby to where it can bring them into a family, uh, a normal family environment. And so someone would decide, I don't, you know, for conveniences, abort that baby. I just, I don't understand that, but God will, one day God will make everything new. He'll make everything right. Yes. What looks so, so out of, out of whack, God will make it right yes, one yes. day. Ain't you glad that you're looking yes. for that day? Yes, I hope yes. you are because that's the only hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You make everything
Is there a greater vision of grace? And in a moment we shall be changed on that day.
when we all get to heaven and see Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We can see Him today. Amen. We may not see Him with our physical eyes, but the Bible says that those that have not seen me and believe, hallelujah, they shall do greater works than I, is what he said. You can see Him today by faith. You can touch Him today by faith. You can have Him operating in your heart and in your life. And what a day that will be when we see His glory, when we're standing before Him, when we see those nail-scarred hands and we see the, the vesture that is representing His blood that he went to that cross and died that we might have entrance way in yes. to the kingdom. Oh, what a day that will be. Yes. But today you can see him, my friends, my brothers and sisters, you can see him today by faith and you can have exactly what he promised. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, thank you, singers thank and musicians. You. Thank you. Just stay in this in this. Praise and worship, just giving Him glory and honor, giving Him praise that He deserves, amen. We are living in perilous times. We are living in times where men are being deceived and going about deceiving. But we don't have to be deceived. No one here, no one watching has to be deceived. The Bible, the Bible tells us what the answer is. And the Bible tells us our way to entrance into the throne room of grace. How we can enter therein. No man is going to be without an excuse when it comes time to stand before God. Because he sent his only begotten son into the world that all who would believe might have eternal life and freedom over the dominion of sin. Amen. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Just give him praise in the house of God. Just lift your hands. Give him thanks this morning. Lord, thank you. Thank you for all you've done, Lord. Thank you for the life that you... Oh, Lord, that you gave, Lord, that we might have the life that we have now, a life of peace, Lord, a life of joy and a life of, of, of thanksgiving, Lord. And we just thank you and praise your holy name this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the life you gave that we now have life, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, he's good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you. All the day long have I stretched out my hand to a wayward and a perverse nation. My children, I tell you this day that what I have committed 
unto myself that you might have all the promises that I have promised you, the Father has promised you, or yes and amen in me. You have to you do not have to come behind or lack in anything when it comes to those things that are spiritual. For I have opened up a pathway. I have become the door. I have become the very veil that separates man from God. I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. I have come to bring a sword to divide what is evil to that what is holy. And my prophets shall make it clear that I am the truth, the way, and the life, and that no man can come unto the presence of the Father and to the throne room of grace, but by what I have done through my death, through the blood that I have shed. Only there will you have the increase that God has promised only there will you have the increase that my Father has promised to all who would believe, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. He's good. He's good. He's even good to those that are bad. Hallelujah. Why is He good? Because He's willing to forgive you. He's willing to restore you. He's willing to right off all the wrong. Hallelujah. And give you His grace and His righteousness. That's what He's willing to do. If you'll come to Him. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, what a presence of the Lord this morning. Ain't it good to be in the house of God, amen, where the truth is proclaimed and where the enemy is thrown out. Hallelujah. 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 What a presence, amen, this morning. God's wanting to do something this morning, amen. He's wanting to edify us. He's wanting to grow us. He's wanting to steadfast our faith in what He's already accomplished, amen. <laughs> If you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Hebrews. Amen. To the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And before you go there, I just want to say, you know, the Bible says, they were singing that song. He says, unless you bear your cross and stay on the firing line. Stay on the firing line. I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to endure all the way to the end, you're going to have to stay on the firing line. And listen, how many times have I thought about digging a foxhole and getting off the line? I can't tell you how many times I've thought about it. But there's always been a still, small voice within me that says, I've already finished the work. I've already finished the work, just stay where my work constantly flows, amen. Stay that place where grace can reign in your heart and your life and you'll finish this course, amen. It is a race and it is a fight, but it is finished. It is finished, hallelujah. We just got to stay in the fight and we got to stay on the firing line, amen. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10, amen. <clears throat> I'm going to start in verse 9, praise God. Hallelujah. Patting around, I hope I didn't leave my glasses laying on the pew back there. Amen. <laughs> All right, here we go. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father, for your word. Lord, I'm asking this morning, Lord, let it edify. Lord, let it convict and convince, Lord, all that would hear it, Lord, that they could come to the place, Lord, where they can receive abundance of grace, Lord, in time of help, Lord. You are our helper, Lord. 
You're the one that died to send the, he the healer and the helper to us, Lord, and we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your presence this morning, Lord. Thank you for your touch on our lives, Lord. Help us to continue to fight this good fight of faith, Lord, and, can, and to go on, Lord. When everything seems to be falling apart, we know that it's falling right in place, Lord, according to as it's written. And, Lord, help us to endure the afflictions, Lord, and go on with you. We ask it all, and I ask it for every one of your children, Lord, in the same, Lord, to help them to endure the days ahead, asking it all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. And it says, Then say he, Lo, I come to you, I come to do thy will, O God. There was only one. Let me say this. There was only one able to do God's will. The only one. And listen to what it says here. He says, He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Oh, hallelujah. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ, of Jesus Christ, once for all. Once for all. One time, he went to the cross one time for all. Amen. Thank God. The scriptures testify here that it was by his body, by his death, that he made an offering to sanctify everyone who would believe. You cannot dispute that according to as it's written. And every high priest standed daily ministering, offer, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. It could never take it away. <laughs> but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down, on the right hand of God. And the title of today's message is One Sin. No, One Sacrifice for Sins. One Sacrifice for Sins. There's not another. There's not another place. There's nothing that can take away sins but the blood of Jesus. What can take away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, what a truth was in that song. Hallelujah. What a truth was in it. Listen, there was nothing. I tell you, I can testify to it today. There was nothing in my life that could take away sin. I went through the 12-step programs. I went through the penitentiary programs. I went through the correction programs. I went through them all. And none of it stopped sin in my life. None of it. But the day, I said, but the day I met this man, this man who loved me and gave himself for me, and I began to believe, there come what? There come a presence to me. There came a life-changing flow of power to me that I really didn't know what it was. But it's not about, and you do need to know. I'm not saying, but what I'm saying is, don't get discouraged because you may not understand everything right off the bat and quit believing. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. Keep fighting it because your deliverance and your freedom and your victory is already there. It's already there. There is no waiting for it. There is no one day I'm going to be free from this bondage. I'm just going to be miserable the whole time that I'm sitting here. No. You can have freedom right now. If you don't have freedom, it's because of unbelief. 
flat foot. Let me tell you just like it is. And I know most of the church don't want to admit that. But that's what it is. It's unbelief. Unbelief is what causes sin to reign in the heart of the unbeliever. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 17, it says, But I was the servant of sin, but I have obeyed from the heart this doctrine which was delivered. What doctrine was delivered to me in 2012 when I was heaped up wrapped up, tangled up in sin, and the sin nature was ruling and reigning in my life. What was, what was the doctrine that I had heard? I had heard about Christ and Him crucified. I heard the message of the cross. I heard that. And when I heard that, there was a presence. What presence? The very presence that God had gave unto Jesus Christ that would lead him to Calvary and ultimately Jesus would give up that presence when he gave his life on the cross that we might have it. Amen? It's that simple. It's not hard to understand. Amen? The Bible is clear on these things. It says... But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Amen? From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering has he perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the holy Ghost also. The Holy Ghost also testifies. Look at that. The Spirit of the Holy Spirit, it says in, in the King James, the Holy Ghost, it says also is a witness to us. There it is. What come the moment I started believing? The Holy Spirit came. And he began to do what? He began to witness to me that the cross was where the power of God was at. And it was only there that I could receive a changed life. Outside of that, I could not receive a changed life. I done told you, I've done been through all the programs that man had to offer. And I didn't find nothing but failure and all that. You know what all those programs do? It just teaches you how to hide those things. That's all it does. Well, I dare you to say that about Team Challenge. Well, I dare you to say that about 12-step program. I dare you to say that about uh, uh, psychology. I dare you to say that. Well, I know because I've been there. All it does is teach you to hide it. But God sees the heart. Amen? He sees the heart, and that's the one I'm going to fear. That's the one I'm fearing, amen? So the Bible says that the Holy Spirit also is a witness to us, for after that He had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. And their sins and iniquity, I will. He said, I will. Everybody needs to say, will I or I will. He, this is what he said. Remember them no more. I will. He said, he said I will remember them no more. He said that this is what's written in the Word of God. Now, where is the place that we come that God will not remember our iniquities and our sin? There's only one place. By this man who offered himself up one time for sin at Calvary, at the cross. Hallelujah. And he says, Now, where remissions of these 
is there is no more offering for sin. There is no more offering. There's no other place that you can go. There's no other place that you can put your faith that God will go to work and begin to do exactly what He promised. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. It says, Having therefore, brother, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. There, I mean, it is, very, it is so clear, brothers and sisters, where our faith is supposed to be at all times. Amen. Having therefore, brethren, he's speaking to us. Hey, y'all sitting in the pews, y'all live, that y'all that are on the camera, every one of y'all that have believed, it's speaking to you. Brethren, it says, brethren. Boldness, it says, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. And, and I wanted to deal with a few things about this. You know, the Bible declares that, that he was made the veil. Amen. The Bible talks about, over in Hebrews, I think I'm right here in the same spot. Amen. Let me find it right here for just a second. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. But the Bible says that Jesus had become the veil because he took away the old. Where did he take away the old veil at? He took away the old veil which the, the word veil is, is it's, it's a separation. A veil was put up in the holies of holies to separate man from God. And if you know through the Old Testament, there was only one person that could go through that veil and could enter into the holies holies. And that was the high priest. The high priest, he, had, he, he was the only one that could enter into that veil and go to the... Uh, the holies of holies, but you know the Bible says that he did not enter into the heart through that veil without blood. He had to have blood. He had to have blood. So that tells us that we have to have faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ in order to go in to the presence of God. Amen. The Bible says in Mark, in Mark chapter 15, verse 37. The Bible says, And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. Where did he cry with a loud voice and give? Is the word cross in these scriptures right here? No. Does it say sacrifice? No. But anyone that's got a brain or spiritually sound at all understands that Mark is saying here that he cried with a loud voice and he gave up the ghost. And the Bible says in 38, the very next verse, it says, and the veil from the temple was rent in twain, it was completely split in two, opened up from the top to the bottom. Uh, it was made open. Now before then, that veil that was there, no one could go in that place but, but the high priest who would go in often once a year tied to offer sacrifices. And, and actually, they would go in there doing daily rituals and washings and, and burnt offerings and things like that. 
you know, but only the high priest could go in that, into the holies of holies once again. But Jesus, when he gave up the spirit, when he gave up his life and atoned for all man's sin, the Bible declares that that way was made open unto all who would believe. Amen. And I just want to use some things that I found, and I don't know much about uh, Johephus. I don't know much about him, but Pastor Wayne put me up on some things about Johephus, and I, and I began to look at it. And, you know, Johephus was alive at the time of Christ, and he witnessed all the things you know, and I know he's not in the Bible, but he reported these things. And it, it's very clear that he was there because he seen the temple. And he and, and this is he gave a report. He said that the temple was four inches thick. It was renewed every year. And that horses tied to each side of the of the the veil could not pull it apart. Horses, several horses, could not pull this thing apart. It, it barred all but the high priest from the presence of God. That means it closed out. It closed them out. It, it, it just simply separated man Ever, no one could go in but the high priest, amen. No one could go in. It says, but when it was torn in two at the death of Jesus of Nazareth, access to God was made available to all who would come by and through his blood. By and through his blood. With that said, I want us to turn over to John chapter 3. Amen. John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Starting in verse 30. The Bible says here, John recorded, he said, He must increase, but I must decrease. Let me tell you something, my friends, brothers and sisters, those that may be watching by, by video. The only way that God is going to increase in your life is for you to decrease. There ain't no other way. Because God ain't going to share his glory with man. Jesus said you must deny self, take up the cross, and follow me. It means die to self. Die to your self-ambitions. Die to all those things that have corrupted you from the time you was a toddler until you of the age of you are now. And there's been a lot out there. That has corrupted us a lot. But he said here, he must increase, but I must decrease. And then listen to what he says here in verse 31. He says, Who he who comes from above is above all. Amen. He who is of the earth is earthly. And speaks of the earth. Now that takes me right back to 1 Corinthians. And we touched on this Wednesday night. Amen. That takes me back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 starting in verse 10. Listen to what, look what it says right over there. You can flip over and read it for yourself. Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Amen. Amen. Verse 10. Let's see what it says right over here. And it says right there, it says, But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. 
Listen to what it says in 11. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, does not that verify he who is of the earth is earthly? And speaks of the earth, speaking of worldly things. Amen? That's what all man has in their nature. Amen? But listen to what he says right there in the same verse. He says, He who comes from heaven is above all. In verse 32, he says, And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies. And no man receives his testimony. Now let's flip back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 where we were just at in 11. It says, Even so the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. But the Spirit of God. The only way that man can know God is by the Spirit of God. And we have to have a born again experience and a born again uh, it has to happen that I must decrease and he must increase takes place when you become born again Amen. And you receive now the Spirit of God and that old man's been crucified with Christ. Now you have a new spirit in you. Amen. One that is going to testify of the things of God. Amen. Praise God. And it says right there, let's go on to verse 12 in 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians 2 and 12, And it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. There's that earthly. Come on now. There's that earthly. Which is the spirit of Satan. Amen. But the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given unto, listen, to us of God that we might know the things that are given to us freely of God. This is what God desires. This is what He desires to be preached. This is what He desires for you to know. This is what He desires for you to believe on a constant basis, not ever changing it. This is what He wants you to stay focused on and what you want to be engulfed with. Amen. Amen. Verse 32, John 3, 32. And it says, again, And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies. But it says here that no man receives his testimony. No man receives it. For he has received it. Listen, he who has received his testimony has set. To his seal that God is true. He that received his testimony. Has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. And God gives not the spirit by measure unto him. The Father loves the Son. That means He didn't give Jesus Christ a measure. Amen. But He give, He completely gave it all to Jesus. He didn't hold back anything. And if you're in Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. He ain't holding back anything from you. But that's the place that you're going to be able to increase in the things of God. You're not going to increase in the things of God outside what Jesus done through His death. Amen? Through the blood that was shed. That's the place we come. That's the place we stay. That's the place we grow. That's the place. There's no other place. He took away the old 
And he brought in the new. He took away the old veil and become the veil himself through his flesh. What does that mean, his flesh? We talked about it. We preached it. Uh, they, they taught about it. Uh, Brother, I mean, Pastor Wayne and, and Brother Medinsky taught about it uh, Thursday night when uh, John preached uh, what the Apostle Paul uh, preached to him because he knew that that spirit dwelled, the same spirit dwelled in both of them. And they knew that, and John would say, we know that this is the spirit that's not of God when man comes and said that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. What does that mean that Jesus didn't come in the flesh? This is what it's simple. It's simple. There was only one reason that a thrice holy God had to come to earth as a man. One reason. One reason. There was not multiple different reasons. It was one reason that God come into this world as a man. Jesus Christ. One reason. To atone for humanity. To die. That's what his flesh was made for. It was made to die. To be sacrificed. That's what God done. And he has not changed. The Bible says that he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. The Bible says this. Amen. And he's not changing his mind at all about this. That's Hebrew 13.8 where the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm going to go to that. Let me, just let me finish right here in John. The Bible tells us that in verse 35, John 3, 35, the Bible says, The Father loves the Son and has given all things unto His hand. Everything. It's clear. No more debating. No more, well, I got a new revelation. No, you didn't. This is the revelation. That God has given everything unto the hands of His Son. Why did He do that? Because God was pleased with the sacrifice of His Son. He wasn't pleased in anything else. He was pleased with the sacrifice of a spirit spotless, of a sinless, of a holy man that walked this earth that never broke the law. Amen. But he says in verse 36, and this is where I want to get to, amen. He who believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he who believes not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. That is a warning from John. And it's not just from John. That is a warning from the Spirit that dwelled in John. Why would the Spirit tell us that he who believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him? Why would he say that to us? Because he's trying to get your attention. He is trying to get you to see that without the shed blood of Jesus Christ shed upon your life and your heart and you believe in there that you are in a place where you will not see life and the wrath of God is upon you. And I can tell you the wrath of God when it is upon you you know it is. That is that condemnation that you're in because the Spirit is doing all He can do to try to convict you to bring you back to the place 
where you can again be justified, amen, where you can be justified, that, 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 that place where you can be cleansed, that place where you can stay in a relationship and abide in Christ, amen. If we're not abiding in Christ by faith in His death, then we're not abiding in life, amen. But Jesus said these things in Hebrew. Jesus, Hebrew 13. Hebrews chapter 13. It is clear that there was one sacrifice made for man. Amen. And it is clear that if we do not keep faith in that sacrifice, that the wrath of God abides on us. That's what the Scripture teaches, and that's what we will teach here until the Lord comes to get us. That the cross of Jesus Christ, the atoning work, the sacrifice, was God's only answer to man to give him the help that he needs to endure the days ahead. Amen. Hebrews 13 Eight. The Bible's let's yeah, that's that that's good, right where we're at. Yeah. Hebrews thirteen and eight. It says Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And listen to what the Hebrew author wrote right here in verse nine. He said, Be not carried about with strength with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. Hallelujah. Not with meats which have not profited them who have been occupied therein. And the note simply says this, this proclaims everything other than simple faith in Christ and His finished work is having no value. I agree with that. Amen. No doubt about it. But I want to touch a little more on it. Amen. The Bible talks when it says it is a good thing that the heart be established in grace. Paul, the apostle, would warn Timothy to fight the good fight of faith as a good soldier. Be strong in the grace of God that's found in Christ Jesus. He would say this to the to uh, his uh, beloved brother, Timothy. Amen? And why is it that he would say this? He would also warn Timothy to take heed that he let no man deceive him. That he continue in that which he has given him. Amen. And today we're out, we're doing desperately, desperately uh, pleading with men today to not be cared about with divers and strange doctrines. Why is that? Because listen, when you begin to add to the doctrine of Christ and Him crucified, and you begin to pervert it in any shape, form, or fashion, what happens? It makes the power of God of none effect. It makes it of none effect. This is why multitudes of churches in this nation today come to church every Sunday. They got their best duds on. They're driving the nicest van, the nicest truck, live in the nicest homes, have some of the most nicest jobs, but they are miserable because they are living a defeated life. And the reason that they're living a defeated life is because they are not enduring sound doctrine. There is no way they would put me in front of a congregation of them type of people. It won't happen. They didn't allow it in Paul's day. They didn't allow it in Jesus' day. And don't think that it's not strange that they're not going to do it with you if you're preaching this gospel. That's just the way it's going to be. Amen. 
But does that stop us? Absolutely not. If anything, the love of God constrains us. Amen. To continue to preach this gospel without favor, without fear, with warning, with the rebuke, with the correction, and all that comes with it. Amen. That why? That the, that the sober man might be established in the faith. How, amen. That he might be established in the present truth that the grace of God can flow freely in that person. Amen. That's why. It has nothing to do with me. It's all about him. Amen. And what he has done. Hallelujah. That's what it's about. And Paul, and Paul and, and if I'm not badly mistaken, I think Paul is the author of Hebrews. Amen. Once again, he says here, he said, it's good that your heart be established with grace, not with meats. That means not with uh, your ceremonies and your religious customs and all these other things that you think that you have a, 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 a life of Christianity by doing these things, you know. But he said, it's a good thing that you be established with grace, not with meats. Meaning not with your own works. Not with something that you think you're doing that's pleasing to God. Listen, because there's only one thing that God will accept. And there's only one place that God will meet man. And there's only one place that God can give you grace. And give you salvation. Give you redemption, sanctification in all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's only found in one place. One place, amen. The Bible says we have one, we have one faith, one God, one Lord. His name is Jesus, amen. And what he's done. One, one. There is one sacrifice for sins. One. The Catholic don't have their own way. The Pentecostal ain't got their own way. The Mormon ain't got their own way. And Presbyterian ain't got their own way. The Muslim ain't got their own way to get to God. The Bible is very clear. And if it's ever been more clear than it is in today, than it has been ever, it is so clear that the child can believe it. Amen. But the only reason that it's that clear is so it won't be hard to find. And the reason that man began to twist and pervert the word of God is because what he said in Matthew, they shut up the kingdom of God. They won't. That's the plan of the enemy. If the enemy can begin to blurry up the waters that you may not see what you need to see and the place you need to come, then what's going to happen? Your faith is going to begin to be persuaded to believe something other than what made the, the presence of God available to you. Amen? But Jesus said, but Paul said again, he said, which have not profited them who have been occupied therein. Occupied therein. You know, one of the things that I want to, I, I really want to buckle down, you know, uh, for the young folks that's in this room tonight, this morning. There's going to come a time, and I hope it don't come, but there will come a time where you're going to have to make a decision to let go of the things of this world and all the persuasion of this world that tries to occupy your time. Because to be occupied with the things of this world is to not be abiding in the one who brings grace. 
You can be so occupied. And hey, listen, I, I'm preaching to myself. You can be so occupied in trying to have success in this life that you totally miss what God is trying to show you. Well, I want to be this. I want to be that. I want Listen, God desires that you be in Christ. No matter what the other worlds do. Listen, I, I'm going to get it down to where the rubber meets the road this morning. 99.9% .9 of people that are out here that are successful do not know God. Let me get it right down. To, and I know that I'm fixing to get some hate mail behind that. But I'm going to tell you something. 99.9% .9 of those that are wealthy and, and, and successful in this world do not have an inkling of truth when it comes to knowing the God of the Bible. They don't. And the reason they don't is because they're occupied in saving their own selves rather than denying it and taking up the cross and staying on the firing line. It's a whole lot easier to get behind a closed door. You ain't on the firing line if you ain't out there with the gospel. If you ain't out there with the gospel on the, on the workforce, or ever let, letting the gospel listen, the gospel that should the gospel should be you. Let's get it down to where the rubber meets the road. The gospel should be you. When some, when when you walk up. In a set of people, they ought to know seeing you coming. Here comes the gospel right there. Here it comes. What do you mean he's the gospel? He's going well, he, to tell you about Jesus and what he did at Calvary. He's going to um, get ready for it. Get ready for it. That's how they done the apostle Paul every time he showed up. You better believe. They was already plotting. Just like Jesus, they was already plotting. Well, don't you know, boy, he's a devil. Boy, how does he say he's the son of God? Well, ain't your father uh, Joseph? Ain't your father the carpenter? You're a carpenter's son. How do you say you're the son of God? Come on, man. They didn't believe him. Many today, they have a Jesus, but it's not the Jesus of the Scriptures. Because if he doesn't change your life, it's not the Jesus with power that the Bible testifies of. It's not the grace of God. The grace of God, does it don't just do one thing. It does all things. It does all things. It teaches us to deny ungodliness. It teaches us how to live in this world soberly. It teaches us how to minister. It brings us to death. Hallelujah. It does all those things. That's what the grace of God does. And it does this constantly. Always. Always. It's always doing this. But you got men out there to convince you that you don't need that always. When the Bible tells you that you, yes, you do need it always. Amen? But the Bible tells us to be content with such things that we have. It tells us to be content with the one sacrifice that was given that we might have the grace of God operated in our heart. I tell my kids all the time. Just because I'm born again does not mean that you're born again. Is that hard for me to say? Yeah. It's a, yeah. I, I, I don't want to try to discourage my kids, but I got to be truthful to them. I gotta tell. I can't tell it, man. I can remember one time I was in a lift. We was hanging some sprinkler pipe over at the downtown butcher, and there was this young guy in the lift with me, man. He got this big vape pen. That sucker looked like a looked like a cassette player, and he put that 
blew out a big old cloud of smoke, man, and I had to blow the smoke away from my face. And I was like, hey, look, young man. I said, you ain't going to be doing that up here. Oh, oh, oh well, well this, is, this is legal. I said, yeah, so is drinking. You going to do that on the job too? I mean, come on now. I said, we, we, we ain't vaping up here, buddy. This is my air just as well as it is yours. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wasn't being ugly with him. But out of that, I simply asked the young man. I said, man, you ever been born again? You ever gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, oh, yeah. When I was a kid, I, he said, I said, well, how did you do that? I said, how do you know you gave your heart to the Lord? He said, my mama and daddy told me I was. <laughs> this boy, 19, 20 years old, you hear me? And he looked me in my face and said, my mama and daddy told me I was saved. And I said, let me tell you this, sir, young man. I said, your mama and daddy don't have the say-so. <laughs> when it's all said and done, your mama and daddy are going to have to give an account for their own skin, not yours. I said, the only way that you can be saved is to be born again. And the only way to be born again is to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, repent and believe. And be born again. That's what the Bible declares. That's what it preaches. And I'm often telling my children the same thing. Just because daddy has been born again and saved, you're not going to be a, I'm not going to be able to put you in my back pocket and, and you're going to get into heaven. That ain't the way it works. You're going to have to believe yourself. You're going to have to come to the place where you see Him as Lord and Savior, high and lifted up. Amen? That's the place you're going to have to come. You're going to have to come to the place where, hey, I want what Daddy's got, but I can't get what Daddy got until I believe what Daddy has got. Amen? And that's the only way it's going to happen. It ain't going to happen any other place. We are saved by faith through grace. Amen? By faith. This morning when you got up, you had to make a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ or follow your own will. And I'm going to tell you, your own will is always turning in the back of your mind. Why do I know that? Because it ain't, it's common to man, that's why. It's common to man. But through all that, the Lord is well able by grace to lead us always over to the death. Thank God. Thank God that He's always able to lead us over to the death. That the life of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal body. Thank God for that. If you can't thank Him for nothing else, you need to thank Him for that right there. Because that's the place where we're going to be able to stay established in grace in our heart. Amen. I want us to turn over to Ephesians chapter 4. And I'll close with this. Amen. I hope I've uh, encouraged you this morning. To continue. Amen. Continue in this great faith. Amen. As Pastor Wayne says, this glorious gospel. Glorious gospel. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 4. Let's start in verse 3. You know, earlier I said there's one body, there's one spirit, there's one faith, there's one Lord. I want to show you that in Scripture before we close. That way you can't say, well, I don't see that. Well, here it is. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 3. It says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace. 
This is where we are. This is where the bonds of peace are kept. Amen. This is where the unity of the spirit. That unity. You know, unity is a play. It, unity is something familiar and something that's alike. A unity. I've got it. You've got it. We all got it. The same spirit, if we'll believe. Amen. Unity. True unity. In verse 4 it says, There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Our hope is in Jesus Christ and what He has done for us at the cross. That is our one and only hope. Amen. There ain't no other hope. There ain't no other place. And it says, one Lord, we know who He is, Jesus Christ. One faith that is in His finished work at the cross. Amen. One baptism. This takes us to Romans 6, 3 and 5. Don't you know that so many of us were baptized? We were baptized at His death. Into his death, we were crucified with him, amen. Like in as Christ had died, we were also raised to newness of life in Christ Jesus. It says there's one God, one Father of all, and Father of all. Who is above all. And when I started this this morning, we was talking about the one who is from above is over all. Remember that? Over in Hebrews? Amen. It says right here, He who is above all and through all and in you all. He's in you. Amen. He's in you by way of faith and by this one place through His death. That's the place that He's in you. And that's the place where He'll grow you. And that's the place where He'll establish you. And that's the place where grace will reign. Throughout the days, amen, when you need it. When you're down in the mully grubs. When, you, when you're in a spot where you're wondering. When you're in a spot where you're about ready to give up. When you're about ready to dig a hole and get in it. When, when you come to that place, oh, there's grace that will come and encourage you to keep pressing forward. Hallelujah. There is grace that we can keep going forward in this gospel and not get caught up in wanting to quit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God that there is. Thank God. It says, but unto every one of us is given grace. And there it is again. <laughs> the Bible's clear that it is by the grace of God. What is the grace of God? The grace of God is the same grace that led Jesus to the cross. It's all wrapped up in the death of Jesus Christ, in His sacrifice. That is how we receive it. If you want grace to continue to reign in your heart and in your life, you're going to have to keep coming to the same place you got it in the beginning. You ain't going to find it no other place. You ain't going to find it in no other doctrine. You ain't going to find it in a building. You ain't going to find it in a tabernacle. You're not going to find it in washings and sacrifices. You're gonna, if you're going to get it, it's going to come by faith in the one who made a sacrifice once and for all and is sit down at the right hand of God that we might have the intercessing work of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's the place. And thank God we still got a few men out there that preach it. You need to be praying for every one of them. And you need to be praying that the Lord would raise up more. Amen? that he'd raise up some more that would preach this gospel and be not ashamed. Amen. But it says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. For he said, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. 
What was these gifts that he gave unto man? Let's jump right over to verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for the perfecting, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. There's the cross again. Unto a perfect man being mature, growing. Amen. That's what it's speaking thereof. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him all in all things that which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly jointed together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. All of it's done by the cross. Every bit of it. There's your increase where John would say, you must decrease and he must increase. The only place that we're going to increase in God is found at Calvary. It's found at the cross. If we depart from the cross, if we depart from the doctrine of Christ and Him crucified, we have left the faith. And if we leave the faith, guess what? Guess what goes with the faith, sir? The power of God. So to say the power of God ain't operating and you leave and make your own doctrine up, Listen, the power of God sure ain't going to work there. The power of God operates in the preaching of the cross. That's what the Bible says. And your faith, let me say, let me add this to, and your faith therein. It has to be by faith because if it's not by faith, then it's not of God. But it has to be faith in the one sacrifice for sin. That one who laid down his life that we might have life and life more abundant. If there's ever been a question, singers and musicians, you could come up, praise the Lord, get ready to close. And I would just want to say a couple of more things. The Bible is very clear on what man's faith need to be in that we might have all the promises of God. The Bible tells us in Romans 8 and 32, How shall he who has spared not his own son, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Amen. All things are at access in your life if you will believe. And I'm talking about believing on Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross, that sacrifice. If you believe that and endure the afflictions and let God's grace continue to grow you and edify you and build your confidence in this finished work, God is well able to do exactly what he promised. Amen. So if there's any doubt, if there's anything that you need this morning, the altar is open, amen. God hears the prayer of the righteous. You hear me? He hears the prayer of the righteous. But the righteous, and when I say righteous, I'm speaking of those that are found in Christ Jesus by faith of his sacrifice. That's who he sees as righteous, amen. 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 Praise God. So if you have anything you need this morning,
We're going to pray with you. We're going to believe for you. And we're going to ask the Lord to intervene. And He already has through His Son, Jesus Christ. Whatever the need is, God's met it already. He met it at Calvary. Whether it's healing, whether it's a broken heart, whether it's finances, whether it's peace of mind, no matter what it is, God has already met the need. Amen. He's already met it. And He's already finished it. Amen. Now is the time to believe. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
praise the Lord. Amen. If we sing that and we really mean that this morning, I want to be more like you, and I sure hope we do. Amen. That's the reason we heard preaching like we heard this morning. Amen. Just as the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11, always presented unto death. Amen. So that the life of Christ might manifest in our mortal flesh. We heard the preaching of the cross this morning. Where all emphasis, every bit of it, was on the death of Jesus for our sake. Amen. Hallelujah. We heard what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2, where Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified, which is the preaching of the cross. And for that reason, there's a reason, amen, and the preacher brought it out this morning. It says it in verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, right after Paul said, I determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and in crucified, he said, that your faith, that your faith should stand not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. No cross, no power. Amen. No cross, it will definitely be a defeated life. Embrace the cross, cling to it, amen, and there be victory both now and forever. That's the good news, amen, and the only way we can have it is to cling to that cross by faith. Fight that good fight of faith, turn from everything else. Makes no difference how enticing, how glamorous, how pretty it looks, amen. Turn away from it and cling to the cross, amen. Your only hope, my only hope, mankind's only hope is what God gave us through the death of his son, only one sacrifice, amen. And his name is Jesus, praise God. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise, amen. That was, once again, mighty good word from Brother James Wilcott. Be sure to march by and hug him and embrace him. Let him know how much you appreciate him, him being obedient to the Lord. And as he said, the message that we preach, the message, the exclusive message of the cross is not a popular message, but it is the only message that God has given us. Amen. We preach what he preaches, and he preaches his son crucified. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you each and every one.